Hello and welcome to the next in our series of videos leading up to the Haru Basho. This is our world famous, never to be missed Genki Report. I'm Bruce Henderson, associate editor of Tachi. Joining me is none other than the creator of the site, Andy. Say hello. Hey guys. And our man in foreign lands now currently in Japan where he was hoping to have watched at least a day or two of the Harubasho, but now instead left in the somewhat locked down city of Osaka. Say hello, Josh. Oh, hi, gozaimasu. Uh, hi, gozaimasu. Um, great. So um, for those of you who are new to Tachi, the Genki Report, we're going to go through some of our favorite Rikishi, talk about who we think uh, is in good condition for this tournament and uh, who we think is going to take it in the shorts. So um, we'll go through, we'll do some quick commentary on uh, on various Rikishi. I will start out and then we're going to just keep going around uh, as we can. So I'd like to tee up none other than uh, Takakesho, the lone surviving Ozeki. Um, fans, keep in mind, these reports from practice, take them with a huge grain of salt because they don't necessarily translate into what's going to happen during the Basho. But uh, I will say that Takakesho has been looking... Uh, a little tentative. Um, Josh, comments. Yeah, uh, you know he's as I, as I said in the podcast earlier this week. I think he's in a position where he just needs to consolidate. Um, you know, he said that he wants to go out and win the U show, which I think is is really admirable. But you know, we just need really great Ozeki performances really solid performances we need 10 11 12 wins um and, and and have somebody who is able to consistently maintain that rank and so um i'm not too worried about him uh but you know the reports of you know various injuries are a little bit concerning but you know i think he's he's got the ability to gamberize through that and hopefully we'll see a performance that actually is reflective of the rank that he's at for once um, from somebody, not from him. I don't mean that from him. <laughs> All right, yeah. Andy, thoughts about Takakesho? Well, he was the, um, uh, I guess, cut upon and dropped down right after he, uh, um, right after he attained the rank, but then quickly moved back up. I'm like you said. I'm hoping that he stays there and stays consistent with at least ten, eleven wins um uh this tournament and i mean this year honestly uh i it's been tricky for him though the last couple of tournaments so i think i mean i i'd be happy with um with a um kachikoshi out of him uh but yeah i'm hoping anywhere there eight to ten wins so josh let's go to one of your picks um he seems to be back in beast mode after completely blowing his uh ozeki waki attempt um, none other than Taki Yasu. Do you think he's a uh, fighting fit coming into Haru? I know you love Taki Yasu. You I know, it, it's hard um, for me to trust someone from that stable when they huh. say they feel good about uh, returning to training after a serious injury. <laughs> um, I think the most realistic thing is that he's probably someone who will have a good, still long run at the top of the division you know, kind of bouncing in and out of the Sanyaku ranks throughout his early 30s, kind of like Tamawashi did. Um, but I don't think it's realistic that he's going to be an Ozeki again. Um, you know, he may get the chance if this next kind of wave of guys coming in behind him continues to fluff their lines. But, uh, you know, just as there will be chances for more guys than just Asanoyama. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, it wouldn't be surprising for me to see him bounce back up to, to Komusubi or Sekiwake again. But... Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know that I necessarily see him putting together the kind of tournament that is going to launch him back into Ozeki contention. All right, Andy, thoughts about Takayasu? Just haven't seen many uh, strong fortnights out of him um, for the last few tournaments, and so I, I'm I'm more hopeful that uh, he'll. I guess his career path will follow. Um, the other former Ozeki Koto Shogiku, uh, and less like Tochino Shin, um, who's fallen a bit more um, yeah. uh, dramatically, I guess. Yeah, dramatically, uh, yes, yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean Koto Shogiku, he's he's still, um, uh, I guess he's still churning, and I'm very hopeful that Takayasu will be able to do that. But yeah, we haven't seen really really strong. Uh, 
um, two, I mean, you got to be able to put in two solid weeks and it's been hard since he got that injury. So, yep. um, yeah. So let's talk about people who are having difficulties putting in two solid weeks some more. Uh, Andrew, Andy, one of your picks, none other than Yokozuna Hakuho. Um, he's certainly looking, you know, he always likes to strut around and look, look awesome in these uh, pre-Basho workups. But uh, what a lot of Western fans don't understand is that it's not necessarily about racking up the wins. It's, uh, it's about getting your form right. And it's just good manners to lose to the Yokozuna. Any thoughts about the boss? I mean, I was still... I mean, when, he, when he went Kyujo in the last tournament, I was still... I, I was pretty surprised. I um, had been hoping that uh, as y- Yokozuna... We always expect like um, at least ten wins, probably twelve, uh, um, and and contention in the final weekend. But I I don't really think that he or Kakuryu need that. Um, and I would have been more than happy with them just getting like eight or nine, which I thought would have been possible. So I think he is. Uh, I mean, and especially since he was kind of called out after uh, or well during the tournament. Um, as to whether he was really all that injured or not. Hmm. Um, I, mean, I, I think that this extra little break uh, could have been a very, very good thing for him. And so I'm, I'm very hopeful that he's going to be in contention in the final weekend. So I'm, I'm definitely hoping for Genki. Okay. Josh, thoughts about the boss? Yeah, he's obviously had a few little problems here and there. Um, One of them named Endo. Yeah, I mean, he was humiliated by Endo in the last tournament um, in some style. You know, it's weird because it's one of those things where, you know, he kind of disappears and he has these problems. As Andy said, you're like, I'm not sure that's a problem. But for it, in sumo, just one little problem can you can derail your whole tuning. Um and then, you know, he's able to come back from that and, and get himself in contention and win a tournament. And so, um, you know, it's it's hard because you can't really rule that out. At the same time, you know, he's expressed reservations about, yep. you know, what the atmosphere will be like and, and oh, how yeah. weird that would be for him. And so, you know, it, it feels like anything could happen, but he, he's actually not my favorite pick for this tournament. So, so any professional athlete or performer, um, if you've never been in front of a crowd – you have no idea the amount of energy you can feed from the crowd, uh, even if they're not necessarily rooting for you. It is going to be a strange one. We are going to see, I think we're going to see sumo unlike we've ever seen sumo before because some people are just not going to have the energy and other people are going to be a lot more calm because they don't have the crowd there. And I, I'm going to be fascinated to see who falls on which side. But let's, uh, let's stay at the top of the Banzuke. Um, with with Yokozuna Kakuryu, who has been absolutely devastating everyone in practice, um, are we finally past the point where he's fragile? Josh, give us some thoughts. Practice? You want to talk about practice? Come on. Um, <laughs> it's like you said, Bruce. I mean, you can't you can't trust results. Um, it's polite practice. to lose to the Yokozuna. It, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, we've seen this before, where you know these guys just come in and quote unquote destroy everybody and then our Q Joe by day two. So um <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean that if he can make it through the tournament, you know, I think that'd be great. I, I it's it's really hard to project where things are going um for Kakuyu right now. But you know, we said that a year ago and you know, he turned around and won a couple tournaments. I mean it was a couple of years ago at this point. Um so who knows? I, I hope he's able to make it through a tournament. I guess yes. that shows where my expectations are for him. <laughs> so the other thing that um, is kind of interesting to me is that the, um, you know both of these guys are more or less on a, a kind of sunset path. And you have to wonder, you know, before we had this uh, this incident with COVID-19, I was I was really working up to say, OK, so this is. This, this may be one of the last tournaments where we see both of these guys really try to put in a full effort. But, you know, a lot of things are up in the air. There was a lot of, of, of emotion staked on retirement post-Olympics. And now even the Olympics are in question. So the timeline for all these things is, is completely up in the air. And I think, I think it's going to affect the headspace 
of quite a few rikishi now. Um, but let's talk about someone whose headspace is always like some kind of clown museum. Um, none other than uh, <laughs> Abi, who's now down at Majishira 4. Um, I think fans still rightfully have a lot of expectations that this guy can do some top-level sumo if he can get it together. He had he had a pretty bad run at Hatsu. Um, Josh, tell us your thoughts about Abi. Well, I'm really curious if, you know, at Magishir 4, he's had a correction and, you know, he may be more of an elevator rikishi, as people say, kind of going up and down, or if he's able to use this moment to, you know, to lower rank to bounce back and reclaim or push to reclaim his Sanyaku spot. And I hope it's a second situation. It kind of, you know, the analogy that I make is it kind of reminds me of, um, this sort of uh, football club, Manchester City, who I don't really love, <laughs> but everybody says their best <laughs> Man penalty City. taker. Oh my God! Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Seriously, everybody says their best penalty taker is their goalkeeper, who never <laughs> takes penalties, and the rest of their players always miss penalties. And with Abi, it's like if he ever just committed to adding more depth to his game, he could be incredible. Um, and yeah. with that long reach and that mobility and that agility. But in the space of what seems logical, like putting your best penalty taker on penalties, uh, he just either can't commit to that new strategy or he just doesn't have it in him. So, um, so yeah, that's why I think he's the, the man city without the titles of, uh, <laughs> of Ricky. <laughs> All right, Andy. I try to top that. Go. <laughs> um, I mean, I... The last time that Abi was uh, at My Gashira 4, he won the Fighting Spirit uh, prize. So, yes, but he was also I, quite a bit younger, but go ahead. Well, I, I think that he's he's going to be facing a lot of the same people from that time around, and he's paired with Enho. Uh, it, he's going to have Onosho and Yuden around him. Uh, Mitakeumi has not been necessarily a force uh recently um and so i i think he he definitely has the ability to pick up another fighting spirit prize uh at least getting nine this time around um uh but we'll see i mean there's just so much churn up there at the top and in the joy yep. that uh it really does depend on on who is healthy the thing is i think most people um or most of the wrestlers will have uh had a, a decent um break from the last you show uh, or from the from the last tournament and so i think that a lot of people are going to be yeah. coming into this first week very very strong um but for for abi his first week is going to be against the weak Sanyaku. So uh, I think he can he can definitely capitalize. Well, we'll see. Um, I know a lot of people have uh, said in response to criticisms of his one-dimensional sumo is that it keeps working for him. Well, are we going to see something new now that it's not working? So uh, I'm kind of, I think that this might be a breakout tournament for Abi, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so let me get into one of the, the Rikshi that I've been keeping an eye on um, since he suffered a pretty disastrous tournament and an injury, uh, you know, more than a year ago. That's you, Takayama, fell all the way back down to Jurio, and he's battled his way back up now to the Joy Jin. And uh, uh, a lot of fans may not know or may not remember that he and uh, Asano Yama sort of broke into the top division at the same time with similar styles of sumo and Yutake Yama was the stronger one um, and so now he's back in the top division and I'm very curious to see um, what kind of results he might turn in um, Josh give us your thoughts on Yutake Yama yeah I'm, I'm really high on him generally you know I thought he would have maybe pushed on a little bit earlier he obviously had injury problems and you know as you mentioned Asano Yama is really kind of developed his technique and style and moved yep. on to another level and become a really strong uh, yotsu guy with that left hand grip and Yutakayama has has largely kind of kept the same style as he had um, when he broke into the division when he was down in Jurio's sort of Oshi style um, 
it, it hasn't it hasn't really developed much, but his efficiency is what has developed, and his ability to to gain wins against tougher opponents has developed. And so, yeah, like you, I'm kind of looking for him to make that next step in this tournament, and I certainly think he is is more than capable of it. Any thoughts on Yutakayama? It'll be interesting to see him again at this uh, at this rank. Yeah. Um, he, when he was uh, previously this high, he had disastrous tournaments, and that was before the injury. So um, I, I'm not nece- I'm not too high on him uh, this this tournament. I think that he's gonna uh, bounce back down into the the mid Maigashira, oh. um, I and yeah, basically have a Make Koshi this time around. Okay, so let's uh, let's skip to a different spot, a few different spots on the Banzuke. Um, Josh, you have your eye on Kiribayama, um, and I, I really think that this is an uh, an interesting tournament for him. Why don't you give us your uh, your read on him? Do you think he's going to be uh, producing wins this time, or has he sort of uh, met the spot where he's going to face a tough ride? Yeah, it could go either way. I mean, one of the reasons I'm really strong on him is it looks like he's really benefited from having Yokozuna added to his stable. You know, Kakuyu can, of course, go and practice wherever he wants and with whoever he wants. But, um, you know, as a really exciting Rikishi for whom the sky is the limit and and who I felt kind of reminds me a little bit of Harumafuji, you know, who better to have close access to than someone who's done everything? And so I I think that's, that's probably been very good for him. You know, I don't know how long it will take. And and uh, I think this may be a harder tournament for Kiribayama um, in terms of the fact he's in new territory. He's going to be facing some of these guys for the first time. But, um, yeah, I, I'd slap a big old Genki on him, and uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, it could go either way, but um, I, I think it could be a promising uh, step forward, hopefully, for him. So you mentioned uh, something I think is very interesting mechanic here is that um, from the two Yokozuna, and maybe this is just a perception of a Westerner from outside, is that um, Kakaryu seems to be the better mentor, mm. right? More of an instructor and a guider and a professor. And, and Hakaho is just more sort of like the, uh, the angry general who, uh, you know, you do as he says or he smacks you across the noggin. So, uh, you know, if, if we see Kiribayama doing well, I mean, we can add him to the list of Rikishi that uh, Kakaryu has basically tuned up. Um, and I'm not going to go into he who shall not be named. Um, who seems to be receiving a lot of that guidance. But uh, Andy, thoughts about Kiribayama? I think he's he's very interesting for how quickly he's come up through Juryo yeah. because he was grinding it out in in the um, Makushita for three years. And it, it's, um, it, I guess it's a pretty quick rise through Juryo, but there's just been... I guess so much, um, I mean, well, Jurio has really been the detritus of, uh, <laughs> of, of the Makauchi. So it's not been quite the farm year. club that everyone hopes it is. Huh? <laughs> I think we lost Andy. He's gotten very still. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, uh, well, while Andy holds a most unusual posture there, <laughs> let's continue on. Just wanna just wanna hit one more uh, if we can before we're done. Um, Terra no Fuji. Everyone wants to know about the kaiju. Um, he he took the the Jurio Yusho last time. He's up in the top end of Jurio. You know, a, a good solid Kache Koshi probably puts him back in the top division. Um, Josh, any thoughts about Terra no Fuji? Yeah, I was distracted there by I think what we discovered Andy's final form for a minute. Um, <laughs> Oh, did I drop out? Oh, you did. You were frozen like this. <laughs> um, That's a... you, know, you'll, yes. you'll, you can see it later on YouTube. Anyhow, Josh, turn to Fuji, go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I've said before, I, I think it's the uh, the sumo has not necessarily matched up to the results, yep. but it's hard to argue with the results, and uh, I fully expect that he's going to solidify his promotion back to top division this time. I don't see any reason why he won't at uh, yeah, Jury of Three East. He's got four guys in front of him, at least three of whom are largely uninspiring. So, well, um, I mean, let's yeah, be he, serious. He can probably pick up at least two of them at the same time. So, I mean, that should... Yeah. 
If he can't do it, that would be the bigger problem. <laughs> All right. Andy, thoughts about Terano Fuji? I, I just hope he chooses not to and throws them instead or does something because um I I think that he uh he will have a really nice tournament down in Jurio. Uh he will I mean it, given his position he will probably visit um the Makuchi for at least a bout or two. Uh and yeah, he'll, he'll be back. Uh he'll definitely be back um for the for the summer. So, but I'm not, I'm not necessarily, uh, I will, given the way that he kind of faded in the last two days of the last tournament, I'm not really thinking that he's, um, I don't know, the hundred percent Vader back to, to, um, back to complete form. I think that he'll, uh, he'll have a decent tournament. Okay. Well, that wraps up our Genki report. So, um, I'd like to thank both Andy and Josh for joining me on this. Uh, and we're going to film one more segment after this, which will be our preview and predictions. So make sure you watch that one as well. And remember, for Sumo, it's Tachi Ai. Oh.